Using the Matilda HTML5 storage page, we're going to be looking at how to run JavaScripts to test pages. Using JavaScript to test is important in things like client side exploits, HTML5 web storage, and other new features of HTML5 make it necessary for pen testers to go ahead and test client side aspects of the browser. In the older versions, we could type in JavaScript on the URL bar and then type in some kind of a JavaScript, hit enter, and the page would actually execute the JavaScript. But this was discontinued in around Firefox 6. There are some settings under the about cache, excuse me, about config. Type in the URL bar filter. And we can turn off the filters, but this actually is spotty and won't necessarily work in versions after around 7 to 8. So how do we run JavaScripts as pen testers nowadays in order to test client-side issues like HTML5 storage? The issues that might be around HTML5 storage would be what the developer chooses to put in there. Since HTML5 storage, much like cookies, is completely controlled by the user, don't want to put any authentication or authorization tokens in there other than a session token, perhaps, and certainly don't want to keep any secrets in there. If there's a policy where you work on what can be stored in the HTML5. As a pen tester, you'll need to test the HTML5 in applications to ensure that the policy is not being violated. So how do we run the JavaScripts nowadays? I'll go ahead and use a use case here in Matilda. We have HTML5 web storage that prints two public items, and there are some hidden items that are supposed to be found on this page. So you can install Matilda and follow along. You hit the toggle hints, the hints section will open up at the bottom of the page and we can follow the instructions. The page gives some example scripts and it explains how to read the HTML5 storage that the developer put into the current page. We can copy this script off and run it, but can't run it in the URL bars anymore. You could use a cross-site scripting exploit in Matilda to run it, but unless the site has cross-site scripting, this is not going to work. A simple way to do this is to use the Firebug plugin. So if we go to Tools, Firebug, we can see Open Firebug is F12, or we can click Open Firebug in the menu. Firebug has about several tabs. A lot of times by default it'll end up on the HTML tab. We want to be on the Console tab, and in the bottom of the Console tab there's this command line. JavaScripts can be entered down here and executed. We're going to go ahead and paste the one from the Matilda example. Notice the Matilda example is designed to be injected via cross-site script, so it includes the script tags. It assumes that we're injecting into an HTML context. However, we're not injecting into HTML. We're running raw JavaScript on the Firebug command line. So remove the HTML script tags, and then just go ahead and hit enter, and we can see that Firebug executed the command. The items are a little bit difficult to see, but we can, current, we can see the current browser. We already noticed that that was on the page. However, if we look carefully, we can see that there's some items, secure.authentication token that was hidden, secure.isuserlogged in that was hidden, message of the day, that was there, and secure.current state of HTML5 storage. Notice the value is completely insecure. And that is essentially correct. So we see a way that we can now execute JavaScripts, simple as they may be, they're going to be necessary in testing some of the client side attributes of sites to make sure that there are no policy violations. There's a little hint here for the Matilda. The items that are hidden by default on this page all start with secure dot. So that's probably an indication of why these two items showed on the page but the other items didn't appear. So knowing that you may be able to come up with a way of figuring out a way to display those hidden items. You can also simply list all the JavaScript files on the page using a program like Burp Suite and simply read the JavaScript that sets the HTML5 storage in the first place.